Hello, so this video is actually on a guide I was going to start using this semester for college. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, not going, you know, there in person, so it's kind of harder. Uh, but it was how to make friends in college, a comprehensive guide. Do you remember the first friend you made? The first person I consciously remember calling my friend was someone I met, I was in kindergarten actually. Uh, we had similar interests and complementary personalities. As I've continued through life, my friendships have shifted. I've made new friends along the way, deepened my relationship with existing friends, and fallen out of touch with others. So, my first friend was probably in kindergarten. I don't have friends really anymore that from back then. Um, so, friendship is born at the moment when one person says to another, What? You two, I thought I was the only one. That was a quote by C.S. Lewis. One of the best things about college is all the opportunities it gives you um, to start fresh. This is especially the case with friends. You're in a place surrounded by literally thousands of people you've never met before. All of these people are potential friends. You have to seek them out, though, um, which can be overwhelming. Sometimes college can feel like this in general is overwhelming. That's why I put this article together. That's the author put it together, for obviously. Um, they wanted to help you feel less overwhelmed and opportunity for excitement um, and opportunities on how to make friends. So why you have to have the friends you do. Where did you make your first friends? For most people, the answer fits into one of two categories, your school or your neighborhood, which is pretty much accurate. That's from the friends that I used to have um, fit into those categories. So what do these two areas have in common? They're where you spend most of your time as a kid. So the reason you had your friends, you had was quite simply that you spent lots of time repeatedly interacting with them. Now there are some caveats. I'm not saying that geography determines all. Shared interests and personality play a very important role as well. You're obviously drawn more to people, some people more than others. Perhaps you admire how outstanding the person was while they were drawn to your calmness. Perhaps you both like trading Pokemon cards or both preferred recess over story time. To be honest, I always preferred story time over recess. Um, yeah, when I was younger, I preferred story time. Still, the influence of where you spent the most time and whom you spent it with is strong. This continues later in life, too. My friends from high school were people that I knew from the following places. Um, so this is from the article. I never did marching band, but anyway. Um, so, how to make friends with intention. If you go looking for a friend, you're going to find they're very scarce. If you go out to be a friend, you'll find them everywhere. This is a quote by Zig Ziglar. Now that we've covered why we have friends we do, let's go out and find some. I know this may seem kind of weird. After all, friendship is one of those things society tells us um, should just happen naturally. Actively seeking friendship seems unnatural. I think, however, that being intentional about your relationship is one of the keys to a happy life. Unlike your family, you have control over who your friends are. If it makes sense then to be deliberately and choosing friends. Actively seeking out friends means you're more likely to have people around you who energize you, um, make you laugh, and support your, you during difficult times. Now that we've established the importance of being intentional about who your friends are, we can move on to the how part. I've broken this part into the three sections to make it easier to navigate and review later. So, the first part is um, nine places to find friends in college. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Excuse me, Dale Carnage. Um, something that I've struggled with in the past is where exactly I should go to meet potential friends. This might seem obvious to some people, but if you're an introvert like me, it can be helpful to have a defined list of places. So some of these places that they missed, listed in, for, in college is campus events, 
um, guest speakers, karaoke nights, protests, charity, craft nights, musical, music fest, TED Talks, things like that are a great place to meet people. Um, they give you an automatic talking point uh, to campus organizations. Campus organizations might be the best place to make friends. This is simply because there are so many of them, whether it's uh, an intramural sport, a social cause, a recreational activity, a musical pursuit, or a career aspiration, there's probably a club for it. Clubs have all the benefits of campus events with the added bonus that they meet regularly. This gives you a chance to have repeated interactions with the same people, um, which is important. Three, your classes. There is 168 hours in a week. Assuming that you spend eight hours a night getting excellent sleep, that leaves you with 112 waking hours. You probably spend 12 to 15 hours in a class each week, which works out to 10% 10 to 13 percent of your time awake so as with clubs classes work better than others um, for making friends classes that have labs and group projects annoying as they may be tend to work better since they give you more time to talk than a class that's a straight up lecture so your dorm i never was on the dorm so informal hangout spots so the, Eastern Maine Community College has the cafe and stuff like that around campus. So, as I mentioned, the gym, uh, the student center, walking in the hall, waiting in the hall, walking around campus. Um, seven online, everything switched online now, so I might as well. Uh, internships and research assistants, and then finally a campus job. So. Hello, so this is part two, how to go from acquaintance to friend. Ultimately, the bond of it, all companionships, whether in marriage or in friendship, is conversation. Oscar Wilde. So you've gone out some places um, above and you've met some people. Ideally, you've chosen a place where you can encounter some of the same people over and over in order to build a rapport. Uh, maybe you've even exchanged phone numbers or added each other on Facebook. Now that you've done these weak ties, how do you take a relationship on a deeper level? How do you go from acquaintance to friend? The answer is, turns out is simple. Not necessarily easy, but definitely simple. What's the secret? One-on-one -on -one time. Hanging out in a group is lots of fun, but it can be difficult to spend enough time talking with one person to really open up to each other and get beyond surface level conversation. The best way to go from acquaintance to a friend is spend quality time talking and doing an activity together. Meeting for coffee is a low pressure way to get to know someone better. Um, your coffee does not have to be fancy as in the photos um, that you see online. To make this easier, I suggest that you focus on cultivating one or two relationships at a time. Going out and meeting lots of people is a good idea to keep your social skills honed and broaden your network. But when it comes to making friends, it's best to keep it small, especially if you're more introverted and find social interactions particularly draining. Like dating, it's also best to keep things casual at first. Message the person and suggest meeting for coffee or cheap lunch. Um, these settings are great because they're low pressure and allow for easy escape if the conversation gets stale. Um, a tip is also pick an activity where you can actually talk to each other, so eating a meal together is better than seeing a movie, for example. Um, so that was it for part two and then we have the final part um part three how to deepen and cultivate relationships a friend is a person with whom i may be sincere that's quote is by randall uh, ralph waldo emerson let's say that you've gone through part two and now you have definitely call yourself friends how do you maintain this friendship and how do you take it to a deeper place maintaining friendship is similar to the about section just keep in touch and do things together regularly. Pretty simple. Um, as a deepening, as for deepening the friendship, the key is, in my experience, is vulnerability. So, when people complain about shallow conversations, they're usually getting at a deeper lack of vulnerability. Um, they're getting at people trying to seem impressive instead of revealing what they're really like and how they really feel. 
Vul vulnerability isn't particularly easy, though. So this is a video, he's referencing a video called The Power of Vulnerability, which is a TED Talk by Brene Brown. So, now it just says get out, we covered a lot of ground, get up, make some friends. So, 